Hey guys, John from FlyMikeHelp.com, and today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite diagrams. It's called a VG diagram, and what this chart does is it helps you visualize and actually see where your aircraft might actually become damaged at certain speeds. So through all different phases of flight, what is the potential load factor on the aircraft, and where could it be overstressed versus where is a safe speed to operate it, even in some of the worst conditions possible. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this, get it all explained to you, and hopefully at the end of this, it'll make a lot more sense to you what speed you want to fly at when you're going through rough air, and what speeds you want to fly at when you're not. So before we look at the specific VG diagram, there's just a few things I want to cover with you guys just to kind of refresh and bring up speed on. So hopefully you all know what all these different markings on the airspeed indicator are, where all the different color changes are, but we're just going to recover a few just to refresh you a little bit here. So bottom of the green arc, obviously that's our 1G stall speed. So it's a power off, flaps up, 1G stall speed. If the aircraft you know, is supporting one G force or it's certified for 2000 pounds gross weight and it's at 2000 pounds, that's the speed it's gonna stall at. Now, as we move along the curve here and we get to the top of the green arc, that's VNO, normal operating speed. So we say, don't go into the yellow arc unless it's really smooth air. Somewhere along here though, before VNO, we actually have VA, which is maneuvering speed. And maneuvering speed changes based on weight it actually decreases the lighter you are. Think of basically a lighter airplane or like a leaf getting blown around in the wind gets blown around a lot easier. And VA, what that is, that's going to be our safety speed. So that's going to be the speed we want to stay below to ensure that we don't have any damage occur to the aircraft. If you're below VA, it's pretty hard to damage the airplane. Now, even being in the green arc but above VA, you still can get damaged. And certainly in the yellow arc here, this yellow range, that's a caution range, only in smooth air and very light load factors on the airplane. And then of course the red line here is VNE, V never exceed speed, and we would get structural damage just from over exceeding that speed going too fast and especially putting a large load factor on the airplane like trying to make a sharp turn in the yellow arc or in the red arc. So now that we've looked at our airspeed indicator, I want to point out to you guys where those lines are, where those color codings are on this VG diagram. So here we have the bottom of the green arc, our normal 1G stall speed. Over here is the top of the green arc, where green meets yellow, that's VNO, maximum structural cruise speed. And then inside the yellow arc here, that's the caution range. And then of course, red line is never exceed speed. So red line on this particular airplane is about 2 26 to 28, something like that, um, if we were to just follow those lines down there. And so above the red line, structural failure occurs. Down here, we can see structural failure occurs. And around here, we can see structural damage. So what's the difference? Well, structural failure, wings fall off. Structural damage, wings get bent, hopefully. Um, and then, of course, in the caution range here, although it's yellow, there's no damage or failure occurring as long as you're staying in smooth air. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment here. So if we look here, basically what this graph is telling us is the potential that the wing can support. So if this is our 1G stall speed and the aircraft certified for 2,000 pounds gross weight, then that means the aircraft can support 2,000 pounds at 1G force and it takes at least 65 miles per hour to do that. So 65 miles per hour will give you 2,000 pounds of lift on your wing. Now, obviously we don't go 65, we don't go stall speed to take off because we need to generate more than 2,000 pounds to get off the ground, at least 2,001 pounds, or preferably even more than that. So we typically, if the stall speed was 65, we'd probably be climbing out at about 80 to 90 miles per hour. And we can see that we can actually support more weight on the wing at those speeds. So the fun fact here is actually, sure, your Cessna 172 can actually support and carry four or five, 6,000 pounds of weight, but obviously doesn't have the power to overcome all that drag to generate that lift. As long as you made your Cessna 172 go, you know, so fast, say 120 miles per hour, well, then it could generate three times its normal certified gross weight of lift to carry and it could actually fly and it'd be fine, but it doesn't have enough power to do that, hence the weight limit and the design factor because also you might exceed uh, your structural design if you got into four times the design weight. 
So that's why we don't overload our airplanes ever. You always have to stick to whatever it's certified for. But the wing can support more weight. And that's kind of neat, but it's also a little bit of a problem for us. And the reason that is, is if this is our 1G stall speed and we start going faster, say we're doing, oh, I don't know, like maybe 140 miles per hour, and we're in you know level flight, we're just at 1G, so we're right here. But say we hit a big bump, a big updraft, that could actually increase the load factor on the airplane, maybe 2Gs, 3Gs, and bump us up to here. Well, that would still be okay. You know, 140 miles an hour in 3Gs, we're still within the 4.4 max and the minus 1.76 negative load factor. Negative load factor is just the airplane flying upside down, um, supporting weight the other direction. So like doing an outside loop or literally flying it upside down. And we try not to do that ever. So we're doing 140 miles an hour and say we hit a really big bump and it actually, you know, loads up the airplane with 4.8 Gs. Well, notice that we actually just got into this structural damage area. And so right here, remember we said VA actually happens before the green arc runs out. You can actually be in the green arc at 140 miles per hour and still overstress the airframe. You can still get outside this range into structural damage. Now, could we, let's say we're doing 120 and that same big gust of air hits us and it tries to load up the airplane with say five Gs of force, well, it actually can't. The airplane stalls right here, and at 120 miles per hour, the airplane will stall at 3.5 Gs. And you might think that's bad because you don't want to stall, but you're much better off stalling the wing and dumping all of your lift rather than trying to support a ton of lift and bending the wing or worse, breaking it off up there. So it's much better to stall the airplane in rough air than it is to actually generate that lift and damage it. That's why we'll go slower, slower the maneuvering speed in rough air. So similar scenario, say we're just going super fast, we're in the caution range, it's nice smooth air, but we hit a bump at 200 miles an hour, that could potentially generate you know, an almost unlimited amount of G-forces on the airplane, 8, 10, 12, far more than the 4.4 it's certified for, and certainly the wings would rip off. And that's where guys get into trouble when you hear about Cirruses um, getting into thunderstorms and the wings falling off, or airplanes that you know fly into a cumulus cloud and the wings get ripped off of it. They're simply going too fast for the conditions where it's turbulent and bumpy and they're constantly getting updrafts, which increases the angle of attack and increases the lift, and it'll increase the lift all the way to a place where it damages the airplane or makes the wings fall off. If they would simply slow down, then the airplane would stall beforehand, and it's not going to stall and hit the ground. It's going to, as you hit those updrafts and go from 1G to 3Gs, and you get into that stall area, say at 100 miles per hour, okay, so we're going to stall you know, right at 2.5G, so we hit a bump that puts 3Gs of strain on the airplane, well, it stalls at 2.5 and, and unloads the wing, it's only going to be a momentarily stall. So you're going through a thunderstorm, and as an instrument pilot, they'll tell you in training, if you ever get into a thunderstorm, keep your wings level, slow down, and just fly straight. Don't worry about your altitude, just get through it. Don't try to maintain altitude, don't try to maintain you know, a steady airspeed other than just below maneuvering speed, just get through the thunderstorm and poke out the other side. As long as you stay below that speed, the aircraft will repeatedly stall, but only for just a second, not even, and then it'll be flying again, which is totally fine. What happens to a lot of guys in those thunderstorms is they don't mean to exceed maneuvering speed. They don't mean to fly you know, into the yellow arc to try to get through it faster. That's not their intention. They typically get a little disoriented, get into a bank, and when they start banking, they start losing altitude, increasing their airspeed. And as the airspeed increases, they start pulling back, which naturally loads up the wing and already puts some extra strain on it. So now they're into the caution range. They're already putting three, four Gs on the airplane because they're pulling back, trying to go back up. And they don't realize they're in a bank or they're just confused and disoriented. And then they hit a bump, a gust of air, and that bumps them into the orange or red range here and breaks the wings off and they die. So that's often what happens is not people consciously exceeding maneuvering speed, but simply not being able to maintain that slow speed because they're not able to keep the wings level. Keeping your wings level is always gonna be your number one priority in turbulent air. Not trying to maintain altitude, just keep the same attitude. Keep your pitch relatively equal, keep your wings level. 
The other important thing to note is when you're in turbulent air, your airspeed will be bouncing up and down like crazy. It'll be changing, you know, maybe maneuvering speed on your plane is 135, but you don't want to aim for 130 or even 135 because it's going to be fluctuating plus or minus 10, plus or minus 20 even in really bad conditions if you really ever did get yourself near a thunderstorm or something like that. So that's when you would want to aim far less than that. You can see the airplane's going to fly just fine, you know, 20 miles per hour over stall speed, maybe even 30 miles per hour over stall speed, and still well below maneuvering speed. So probably the most important speed to know your plane, besides VX and VY and stall speeds and all that, is really what is maneuvering speed, because it's not placarded on the airspeed indicator anywhere. And it also changes with weight. The lighter you are, the further this maneuvering speed will move back along this curve. You can find all that information in your POH and that's going to be your best resource before you go fly a new airplane to figure out what is your maneuvering speed. That's going to be your one safety margin. If everything else goes terribly wrong, keep the airplane below that speed and it should stay in one piece. It'll still fly. And your number one priority is always fly the airplane. Everything else comes second. So if you can manage to do that, you'll be just fine. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of what's happening to your airplane as you speed up. The potential for carrying more weight increases and not that you're actually carrying more weight but the potential is there and should you pull back real aggressively or hit a big gust of air then you could potentially load up the wing with excessive g-forces and tear it off also that negative g limit you may think is only applicable to like doing aerobatics or flying the airplane upside down but it's not it's actually how could you exceed this well say you're just doing you know maybe 130 miles per hour and there's Airplane. birds in front of you, and you aggressively push down, shove the yoke forward, and that negative G's the airplane all the way to a point of structural damage or structural failure. So there is actually a negative G maneuvering speed much lower because your negative G limit is much lower than the positive G limit. So just be aware of that. Also, usually, if the birds are at the same level as me, I'll try to climb because I know I can put a lot more strain on the airplane in that direction, and birds usually like to dive. Um, rather than try to climb when you're about to hit them. But for anything, even for traffic, if you're going to shove aggressively forward on the yoke, really be aware that the airplane cannot handle nearly as much stress in the negative uh, G realm compared to positive G loading on the wing. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully that explains VG diagrams for you. If you have any questions at all, or if you have any ideas for other topics or videos, leave them in the comments below. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Make sure you like the video, give us a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel to keep up with our latest videos coming out. Be sure to check out our Patreon page. All your support really helps to keep this a free online ground school for everyone, and we could really use your support to help us pay for our hangar rent and fuel for our airplane. And remember, if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. We'll see you all next time. <laughs>